Good day, everyone. So here's an outline of what we are going to discuss. At the end of this module, you will be able to know the definition of accounting, underlying accounting assumptions, and qualitative characteristics of useful financial information. So let's begin. There are different definitions of accounting, but the most common definition is from AICPA or the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. It defines accounting as an art since it entails the use of skills and creative judgment. Hence, one must be trained to be able to perform accounting functions well. Moreover, in this definition, accounting is said to be the art of recording, classifying, and summarizing. First is recording, which involves writing down or keeping records of business transactions using general journal. Next is classifying, which includes grouping similar items that have been recorded with the use of general ledger. Then, once they are classified, information is to be summarized into reports, which we call financial statements. So before we proceed to underlying assumptions in accounting, let me first share to you what accounting assumption is. Accounting assumptions or accounting postulates are the basic notions or fundamental premises on which the accounting process is based. The first assumption is the entity concept in which the business has a separate and distinct personality from the owner, meaning the transactions of different entities should not be accounted for together. Each entity should be evaluated separately. For instance, Alfred, Brian, Clara, and Daisy formed ABCD partnership. So how many distinct personalities are there? The answer would be five. The first is Alfred, second is Brian, third is Clara, fourth is Daisy, and fifth is the ABCD partnership. All the first four are natural persons, while the partnership is a juridical person. So all the transactions of the ABCD partnership are treated as separate transactions from its owners. Whatever is contributed by the partners to form the partnership is owned not by the partners, but of the partnership. The next assumption is going concern. If there would be a symbolism for that, it would be an infinite sign. Since in this assumption, we assume that the business will continue to operate indefinitely. For example, in preparing the financial statements of a mini supermarket, an accountant assumes that the business will not close or shut operations within the next years. Another assumption is the periodicity concept or time period. In this assumption, an entity's life can be meaningfully subdivided into equal time periods for reporting purposes. By convention, the accounting period or fiscal period is one year or a period of 12 months. The accounting period may be a calendar year or a natural business year. So, you're wondering what's the difference between the two? Eh, parehas lang naman silang 12 months. A calendar year is a 12-month period that ends on December 31. Diba? Our calendar starts with January 1 and ends on December 31. On the other hand, fiscal year is a 12-month period that ends on the last day of any month. For example, nag-start ang business ng September 1, definitely it will end on August 31. Another example, Emma owns two businesses, the salon and the spa. Thus, separate financial reports should be prepared yearly. With that, Emma can measure the income of the two businesses annually. And for the last assumption, we have the monetary unit. 
The Philippine Peso is a reasonable unit of measure in that its purchasing power is relatively stable. This assumption has two aspects, namely quantifiability and stability of peso. Quantifiability means that the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses should be stated in terms of a unit of measure, which is the Philippine peso. Obviously, kung nasa Philippines ka, dapat ang unit of measure niya ay in Philippine peso. For the next aspect, we have the stability of peso. With this, the monetary unit is presumed to be stable over time and retains its purchasing power. Ibig sabihin, kahit magkaroon ng inflation or deflation, the value of the money in the accounts will be remained constant. For example, Finn Home Furniture owns a factory that it had acquired in 2012 along with the surrounding land. The acquisition cost was 2,540,000. It is now worth a far greater amount, but the factory continues to be valued at its original cost in the company's book of accounts. That's because, according to the monetary unit assumption, its value cannot be increased to take inflation into account. Before we proceed to qualitative characteristics, Let's first have a short recap about the underlying accounting assumptions. Just remember, GEPM, an acronym for going concern, entity concept, periodicity concept, and monetary unit. It was just only my suggestion on how will you remember it easily. Pero kung may own way naman kayo, you can do that. Now, Let's proceed to qualitative characteristics of useful financial information. The revised framework distinguishes between the two types of qualitative characteristics that are necessary to provide useful information. So, qualitative characteristics are the characteristics na need ma possess ng ating mga financial reports upang maging useful siya sa mga users in making economic decisions. So for the first qualitative characteristic, we have fundamental. This characteristic focuses on what should our financial reports contain. So under this, there are two components. The first one is relevance. We can say that an information is relevant if naaapektuhan niya ang decision ng mga users. From the definition itself, it's the capability of the information to make a difference or influence a decision made by users. Pero paano nga ba naaapektuhan ng information ang decision ng mga users? So under relevance, we have two components, which are predictive value and confirmatory value. Relevant ang isang information kung meron siyang predictive value na kung saan Natutulungan niya ang users na ma-predict ang future performance at future cash flow ng isang business. On the other hand, meron namang confirmatory value if natutulungan ang users na ma-confirm yung mga past prediction ng isang business. These two values are said to be interrelated, meaning ang isang information na may predictive value ay madalas nagtataglay din ng confirmatory value. For the other component of fundamental characteristic, we have the faithful representation. When we say faithful representation, dapat ang information na pinapakita ay kung ano yung totoong nangyari. It must present what it purports to represent. Paano nga ba masasabi na ang information ay faithfully represented? So under this, we have three components. First is completeness. Dapat ang information na binibigay ay kompleto para mas maintindihan ng mga users. Second, the neutrality. Dapat ang information ay walang pinapanigan. Hindi natin siya i-revise para lang mas favorable sa isa. Kailangan, 
fair lahat ng information. Lastly, free from error. Dapat ang information na binibigay natin ay accurate. In short, walang mali. So now, let's proceed to the second and the last qualitative characteristic, which is the enhancing. Kung ang fundamental characteristics ay para sa contents, ang enhancing naman ay para sa presentation. We have four components for this. First is verifiability. In this component, one must be knowledgeable and an independent observer to be able to come up with the same conclusion. This means na pag tinanong ang two separate individuals, dapat mag arrive sila into the same conclusion. With that, magkakaroon ng consensus at nagiging verifiable ang information. Second component is the comparability. This pertains to an information that is comparable. We can compare one business from another business to be able to identify the similarities and differences. The third component is understandability. Kailangan ng information na pinoprovide sa users ay madaling maintindihan. This concept assumes that the reader have enough knowledge about business, but does not require advanced knowledge para maintindihan ang isang information. The fourth and last component is timeliness. This pertains to the information na kailangan ay available on time. Hindi pwedeng laging late ang info. Hindi pwedeng tapos na ang decision making, saka palang dadating ang report regarding that na kailangan ng users. And yes, that's it for enhancing qualitative characteristics. To help you remember, use VCOT, an acronym for verifiability, comparability, understandability, and timeliness. And that's it for this video. I hope that you learned something today. And this tutorial will help you study conceptual framework. For more updates, follow us on our social media accounts. For Instagram, at LayagJPia. For Twitter, at LayagJPia. And for Facebook, slash JPIA de la Salipa. Best of luck, JPians! Thank you for watching!